So let's get into it. Why do you need topspin? This is a really good graphic to just visualize a little bit more what the different types of spin do to, um, do to the ball. So the first thing, of course, that we see right away on a topspin, reason number one, we have more net clearance. More about that in a second. The second thing that we're seeing is that, for instance, with a slice, you have a very, very low bounce, and that's exactly what you want to achieve with a slice. Now, here is where it gets a little more difficult for players that are playing with um, opponents that have more topspin than what they're used to. There is a much higher bounce, and that is an issue when it gets that ball out of your strike zone. So you have a sharper incoming a bouncier trajectory and then a higher bounce. And that could be that that's above your shoulder or anywhere outside of your strike zone. And more about that when we get to reason number two and three of why you need topspin. The first thing that we want is higher net clearance. I'm staying out of the net. When was the last time you saw Rafa Nadal missing the net. He misses deep, he misses wide, but barely in the net. So you stay out of the net. That's number one. Now, when you're watching Nadal next time, he's actually not hitting the deepest balls. A lot of his balls are landing right in this area, but because he has so much monster spin on the ball, his opponents are still far behind the baseline. This graphic is taken from the 2019 ATP Finals, Nadal against Zverev. And although he did end up losing that match, actually, I think this graphic really drives home the point with how much margin you can play when you hit extreme topspin, such as Nadal does. So you see here that really, this is a super safe area anywhere, but, because he has so much rotation on the ball, which in itself is a problem for the opponent, and I'll get to that later, what it does to your, the opponent is you push them way behind the baseline. And we'll see that in the next graphic. 80% of balls are being hit by Alexander Sverre behind the baseline. And 40% are deeper then six and a half feet. So that is really far behind the baseline. And you see how few balls he actually made contact with inside the court. So every dot that you see here is one contact point where Alexander Sverev was able to make contact with the ball. So again, 80% are behind the baseline and a not so great area is all the way back here. So that is actually more than 40%. And why that is a problem, I'm gonna show you right here. One of the problems with being that far behind the baseline is that I have certain areas of the court no longer available for me to hit into. So this is my player, and I'm literally putting him or her all the way to the bottom of the board to show you how far that um, person is back. So what I mean by taking space away is either the player is not at all able to hit a, an angle, for instance, opening the court, or it's a really, really high risk shot. So I'm forcing the errors off of that passive court position. So of course, they can still hit through the court, but that's not gonna hurt me as much as if that player is shorter and closer to the baseline and can hit more aggressive angles because that is really ultimately what people want. They want to open the court to make me run more and force lower quality shots off of me. And with higher, heavier topspin, you just pin them so far back that certain areas of the court are no go anymore. It feels that a high, heavy incoming ball bullies your racket. You're trying to get the ball above somebody's shoulder or at shoulder level, and you're literally pushing the racket away. So it feels that you have to really, really get a lot of balls out here in front to counter that heavy topspin. 
And that is, of course, not that easy to do. With higher, heavier topspin, you're dictating play with controlled aggression. Because the ball will stay in, because of a beautiful thing called the Magnus effect, Google it, you can swing very, very aggressively when you're hitting extreme topspin, the ball stays in, we talked about that. But what you're consistently doing is you're asking your opponent to do something that they probably don't want to do. They have to consistently adjust with their footwork. They probably will catch a lot of balls outside of their favorite area in their strike zone. So you are dictating play, but with controlled aggression, you're staying within your margins, you're staying out of the net, and that is a beautiful thing to do.